What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Tar Heel Illustrated. Dot com, or if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated, I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, and joining me as he always does, THI publisher Andrew Jones. And Andrew, as the people can tell by the title, we're here for another episode of our UNC basketball ISO series, and we're going to be focusing on Dawson Garcia in this episode, as it is Dawson Garcia week at Tar Heel Illustrated, as we like to call it. We've run some other articles throughout the week as well on Garcia. So if you want to go check those out, link below to our website in our description. You can check that out after the video is done. And also while you're over there, make sure you sign up for our premium message boards and premium subscription for just eight thirty three a month. You can also find the link to that in our description below. So much of what we do is premium. You have to be signed up to access it. And that includes getting access to our premium message boards as well, which has a ton of recruiting content and a ton of other stuff that goes into it. But if you want to see it, you have to be signed up for it. So just eight thirty three a month, you can do that. Just head on over to tarheelillustrated.com and sign up. But of course, wait till the video is done before you do that. But AJ, let's talk about Dawson Garcia. Um, I, I guess one of the newer guys that, that Carolina has got, obviously a guy that came in from Marquette as a transfer. Um, I'm sure a lot of Carolina fans will recognize his name. Um, absolutely lit up the Tar Heels last season in Chapel Hill and what was a, a big win for Marquette. And, and I think we've talked about it a lot, probably one of the worst performances, if not the worst performance we saw from the Tar Heels last season, particularly in the Smith Center. But enough of that, Dar Dawson Garcia is now with Tar Heel, and we're here to kind of talk about what kind of player we think he can be. Now, as a freshman at Marquette last season, averaged 13 points, 6.6 .6 rebounds, and 0.8 assists. Um, he played in 27 games and averaged 29 0.7 minutes per and also shot 48 percent um from the floor so i mean just looking at those stats alone and i mean you can't really complain though about it too much from a, a guy that came in as a freshman highly touted guy obviously a guy that carolina and roy williams um were after and recruited hard um before he came out uh and decided to, to go to marquette but carolina ends up getting him uh with roy retiring and hubert taking over um Gar garcia decides to transfer and, and is a big time pickup for the Tar Heels. Now, AJ, I want to ask you, you've obviously probably watched more film. I know you've watched more film than I have, and I've, I've watched a fair share of highlights on them, but you've done a little bit more research. You've crunched a little bit more numbers. You, you've watched a lot of film on the guy. Just what kind of player is Carolina getting in Dawson Garcia? Well, when we talked about Brady Manick last week, I said, well, uh, Carolina added the 14th all-time leading scorer in Oklahoma history. With Dawson Garcia – they added the leading scorer and rebounder for Marquette a year ago and a guy who lit up the Tar Heels in the Dean Dome. And, you know, lightning sometimes strikes uh, strikes uh, twice in the same place in sports. And people love to point out that Cam Johnson went for 24 in the Dean Dome against Carolina the year before he was playing for Carolina as a grad transfer. And Dawson Garcia went for 24 last year as well. I think the, what's really important about this pickup is that uh, – in watching Dawson Garcia and a lot of his video, and having also watched a lot of Brady Manic, it's very obvious that they're very different players. Mm -hmm. And some people thought, well, gosh, why are they going to get Garcia as the same kind of guy Manic is? Well, they're not the same at all. They can coexist on the court at the same time. You'll see uh, times when Garcia is the five and Manic is the four. Maybe both are even spread out. Garcia plays on the premier. He had 26 threes last year. He can drive from the perimeter. He's left-handed, so he's very strong using his left hand driving from the perimeter. I think he's probably maybe a little bit more comfortable driving from the right side of the perimeter with his left going in the middle of the lane and, and try to drive against the defender. Pretty good at getting a defender on his hip. And he can score on him because he's very long. He's 6'11", when he's long. Mm -hmm. Wingspan, I think, is in the 7'1 range. And um, so a guy that can move, a guy that can get someone on his hip and go up and score. He's not electrifying. He's not supremely athletic. I think that's one of the reasons why um, when he when he put his name in the NBA draft that he didn't register as well with the league, I think, as he as he thought he would. He was a McDonald's All-American. Some people thought he was a one-and-done type. Mm -hmm. And when he went to Marquette, people figured, well, he's going to get a ton of looks. He'll be there for a year and leave. Well, he was there for a year and left. But he learned some things. And guys do when they go to college. They, they realize, okay, there's a lot more to the game that I need to get better. And I think that's one of the reasons he's at North Carolina. He's there to get better inside. He's there to be more formidable around the rim and just have an opportunity to play with really good players 
at some NBA talent on the roster and just kind of see where his game is and grows. A lot of people have penciled him in as just a one-year guy at Carolina. I haven't done that, Jacob. I would not be surprised if he's there for two years. He might look at Armando Baycott in some respects as the prototype because Armando was viewed by the NBA similarly to how Garcia was. He's back. He's going to try to make himself an NBA player. Let's say Armando explodes, has that all has that ACC play of the year type season that Hubert's already said could happen, and Armando ends up turning himself into a first round pick. Garcia can use two years of Carolina to be that guy. So yeah, yeah. I'm not going into this season thinking he's just a one and done guy in Chapel Hill and he'll be gone. That could be the case. Mm-hmm. If it is, that means he has a phenomenal year. I think what Carolina's going to get from him is a guy that can play the five a guy that can play the four, the guy that can spread, a guy who, who does a nice job moving in the court, make himself available, but needs to be more consistent at those things. The game before he went for 24 and 11 in Chapel Hill, he had a goose egg against Seton Hall. Yeah, no, so yeah. there were some inconsistencies a year ago that you expect from a freshman. Mm-hmm. And he also had a lot of pressure of being the guy. There were periods, you go back and look at some of his games last year, there were periods where he didn't get shots or he'd score a lot of points in the first half. And he'd take one shot in the second half. His teammates weren't getting him the ball. Mm-hmm. He had some point guard issues at Marquette. They had a lot of issues. That's why Steve Wojcicki was fired. That's why they had a losing record. And, uh, you know, that's why that was such an upset win because they weren't a very good team last year. So Dawson dealt with being the focal point of other teams' defenses and still turned in 13 and 6.6. Now at Carolina, he's not always going to be that guy. He's going to have more Baycott out there. He's going to have Manic out there. He's going to have Caleb Love, whatever R.J. Davis becomes, whatever Kerwin Walton becomes this year. We have a lot of other options. So I think we're going to see opportunities for his full game to blossom without it being squished a lot, which I think was the case at Marquette at times last year. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, it wasn't like, you know, Marquette finished, what, 13 and 14. So it wasn't like they were the greatest – team in the in the world last year and he was definitely a a standout performer on it but I I think for me what how I think he's so important of a pickup because we talked about Manic you know he's 6'9 he's a guy that can play down low but doesn't necessarily prefer to would much rather step out and and shoot and stretch the floor you also brought in Justin McCoy transfer from Virginia he's 6'8 he's not really a I mean he's a guy that likes to play down low but you know compared to a guy like Dawson Garcia who's 6'11 and more proven and especially on the offensive side of the ball I think a guy like Garcia when you consider that Garrison Brooks graduated moved on um Dayron Sharp NBA Walker Kessler transfer I mean Carolina just needed a body down there and you couldn't blame him for going out and getting maybe somebody a lot less talented than Darkson Garcia and just trying to find what they can. But I think it's a win-win with him because he, A, he's a good player. He's a really good player. And B, he just fills such an important role. You combine Baycott and, 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 and um, Garcia down there on the block. And man, that's one of the best front courts in the country, in my opinion. So I think just not only is his, is his presence and his body type and what he can do important, He's also just such a skilled player, too, that you're adding a, such a, a guy that's not only going to go down there and fill a role, he's going to ex- – I mean, you'd expect him to excel at that role and be a really, really positive contributor on both sides of the ball for the Tar Heels next season. Well, like Manic, you added a guy that could go for 25 on a given night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. ACC, so that's very viable. Well, you, you brought up something, though, I think people also need to understand. I thought it was really interesting in the release that Carolina put out when Dawson Garcia formally signed. Uh, Hubert kind of went out of his way to say he's a really good defensive player. And he got a bad rap defensively at times last year. Uh, and I think guys that in which people think of a long dude as a stretch, they think, well, he can't defend the blocks very well. Watch the film of the North Carolina game. Look at the struggles that Sharp and Kessler had. Uh, Baycott struggled in that game a lot. A lot of that was Garcia. He was guarding all those guys. Uh, Brooks had a pretty good game, but most of his buckets were step away. You know, those jumpers he hit inside the free throw yeah. line, free throw lane. But the other three combined for like 12 points. And Garcia, his length, he's strong. He's a guy that, you know, if he if he establishes ownership on a lower block defensively, he could push a, 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 an offensive player out a little bit. And I think that that's what Sean May will be working with him on a lot. Sean used to do that some too. Sean got – didn't get enough credit for being a better defensive player because sometimes people think it's just how you handle someone when the when your your guy has the ball in their hands. 
so much of defense is played when your guy doesn't have the, the ball in his hands. And I think that's where Dawson Garcia can help this team. He forced a, an out of bounds a, a walk or a dribble on the, on the baseline by, by Baycott. He had a stretch where he forced two missed shots. He was frustrating the Carolina Bigs last mm-hmm. year. And so I think that he could be very valuable defensively to this team. He'll be, should be better defensively this year than he was a year ago. And I, I think that that's where he's going to help Carolina a lot too. Again, he may not have games where he's going for 18 and 10. I don't, I don't think Manic and Garcia guys right now, Carolina fans should say, well, we're going to pencil them in for this and this every game. I think there's going to be a lot of fluctuation with those guys. But the beautiful thing if you if you look at this from from a Carolina perspective, is they're different players, so there might be an opponent one night where you really need what Manic gives you, and he's there to give it to you. There might be another night where there's an opponent where you really need what Garcia can give you, and he's there to give that to you to complement what Armando does. So uh, I think this gives them a lot more diversity. It gives them more gives Hubert more options. There could be nights like I just said, maybe Manic goes 28 minutes and Garcia does 18. The next game, they play somebody else and Dawson Garcia is at 28 minutes and Mannix at 18. Hubert has options. This gives him tremendous versatility with what he can do. And in my personal opinion, when you look at all the guys that went into the portal, if you were to go back to the beginning or late March when guys started hopping in the portal and go to the beginning of July, early July when Garcia made his decision and look at every kid that was in the portal, if North Carolina could choose two of them, I think they got the two that they needed the most in Manic and Garcia. Definitely. Yeah, that's a great point. I'm glad you said that because I couldn't agree more with that. I think those, they're just two stellar pickups and for, for the for the Tar Heels. And last thing I want to ask you, you know, like I mentioned, you, you had Sharp and Kessler leave, but you brought in Manic and Garcia. Do you think Carolina – you know, because it was – let's not forget, I mean, it was panic stations from a lot of Carolina fans when those – you know, when Kessler and Sharp left and, you know, Brooks decided to – even though we already knew he was leaving and graduating and decided to go to Mississippi State. I mean, there's a lot of Carolina fans that were in panic mode about that, and you know, I guess in some ways you can't blame them. But do you think Manic and Garcia coming in to replace those guys has almost upgraded what you're getting in Carolina's front court, or, or is it – is that maybe a little bit of a stretch? Oh, no, I think I, it gives them better balance. Mm-hmm. Gives it more versatility in the front court. And by the way, there was no mass exodus. They knew Sharp was going. Yeah. Garrison wasn't coming back for fifth year. It was never going to happen. Mm-hmm. So um, Kessler surprised him, obviously. But I, I agree. And, you know, Kessler had one really good game last year. Yeah, it's not. And then a couple of nice stretches in games. But, you know, he followed up that really good game FSU with a real clunker at Syracuse. So mm-hmm. um, what you get here is – two far more accomplished players. I, Kessler could be outstanding at Auburn this year. I don't know. Wouldn't yeah, surprise yeah. me if he is. But I think given what they have, given what Hubert wants to do, you know, the panic button never should have been pushed. It's amazing how things work out if you just give it time. Yeah. And I believe that the roster composition now is better suited for this team to have a lot of success moving forward than it would have, would have been had there not been much movement. So, uh, look, for starters, Caleb Love is there. Had they been somewhat the same up front, maybe he wouldn't be there. Could you imagine ushering in a new point guard? Or yeah, it's a good point. Asking R.J. Davis to be the full-time point guard. So, it affects everybody around you. And this gives them tremendous versatility, a lot of numbers. A couple been there, done that, guys. Manic in particular. But Garcia was pretty good. His career high was it. Villanova last year. Yeah. He went for Number 20, five Villanova, yeah. Mm-hmm. We were 28 at Villanova, and, and, and that ended up being a 30-point game, but people need to go look at the details inside that game. It was a close game well into the second half, mm-hmm. and Garcia was just putting up more score from all over the floor in Villanova, and then, boom, Wildcats went on a run. That was one of those games where Garcia wasn't getting touches once the period started. Teammates didn't get on the ball. Uh, he didn't get open, and um, Villanova ran away from him. But he, it was on the road, and he was score. He scored, I think, but I can't remember. Eleven field goals in that game. I think nine of them either tied the game or either pushed or extended a lead uh, for Marquette. Oh wow! Or cut it within two. So those were all big buckets mm-hmm. at Villanova. Now it wasn't a typical Villanova crowd, but still, that was Villanova. Mm-hmm. So. 
he's been able to take his game to a very high place at times. Now the, the, the mission for him is to get it there more frequently. And when it's not there, to still be higher. You don't want to have those zero point seat in all games. He had five games where he was at five points or less. So mm-hmm. that's part of being a freshman. It's part of ha- having the other teams focus their defenses on you. And that will be as much the case this year. So I expect higher level of consistent play and uh, more of those types of games, maybe not 28 very often, but the potential is there. So mm-hmm. Carolina got great additions with Manic and Garcia. Definitely. You know, Armando, Armando has to be loving this because he's not going to have 46 guys draped all over him. There's going to be options out there. And Armando, I mean, if Mar- Armando could get the ball in the lane and turn and not clank into another defender, he's going to score on guys. Mm-hmm. He showed last year an ability to really have success getting guys on his hip and just doing do with one defender. He's going to have a lot more of that now because of these guys. Definitely. Yeah, and we did a video on our Baycott a few months ago. This is obviously before kind of everything shook out with the, the transfer portal and everything, especially Garcia coming in. But, I mean, no no reason to expect Baycott's not going to have another big year as well. And I do agree that I think bringing Manic and, and um, Garcia and even McCoy – uh, is going to really help him out because, like you said, he's not going to be getting quadruple teamed every time someone passes the ball in the lane because he's the only guy they got down there. So, yeah, I think Garcia – for me, Garcia was – and I remember talking to my dad about this right real quickly before we wrap up. Garcia was the one when I said, okay, I, I already liked how this team was looking, but I really like how this team looks now. I think that his addition is just so valuable and and just what he's able to do and what he brings to the floor is – is big time for this team, and, and I de- definitely think it fits. What uh, the I think it makes them a final did. four contender. I think it makes I agree. them I, that's, a contender and a final four contender. I agree as well. Now, let's let's pump the brakes. Also, mm-hmm. there is a lot of well, this needs to happen. This needs yeah. to happen. This needs to happen with a lot of guys. For sure. I mean, if Caleb and RJ throw the ball over the place, and they don't improve that part of their game, yeah, it it's not going to happen. If, if you know, if they're shooting thirty percent from three point range, it ain't going to happen. So, you know, they need they need more diversity from Kerwin's game. It has to show growth. Leaky has to figure out. They have to figure out a role for Leaky. Mm-hmm. Now, I know what the role should be and probably what it will be. Does he actually do that? I think he can. There's a lot of question marks. And that's one of the reasons, and we'll get into this as we get closer to the season, but it's one of the reasons why I really like this non-conference schedule, where they have seven very, very winnable games on there, including the one at College of Charleston, because it's going to give them opportunities with a stretch of those games in November and then a stretch again late in December where we can see them sort of come together. they got to build chemistry on the court. You can only do so much in practice. They get one exhibition game. So games against Elon and all those clubs, UNC Asheville, are going to allow for opportunities for them to build cohesion, figure out what five work best together, what different combinations work best together. And uh, it, it'll take time. It'll be okay. well into January before he really figures this thing out. And that was kind of the case with Roy a lot of the time, too. 100%. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, AJ. I think on paper, this team's with that addition of Garcia just a lot better. And I don't think there's any reason to believe if things go well and people improve like you expect them to. And this, there's no reason to believe this team couldn't, you know, be a Final Four contender. But, you know, we'll see what see how it goes. Like you said, a lot of things that got to go right for that to happen. And sometimes you just got to get, get a little bit lucky. So we'll see. But hey, by, Dawson, the way, Garcia, by the way, shout yeah, out ahead. to me for making it through these videos because I'm still sick. Yeah, I about to say, I still hear it a little bit. You sound a little bit better. Through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know what's coming through. This has been the longest uh, summer sickness of my life. So I know what you mean. Yeah, you definitely so sound I, better than than last so week. So I, I powered through. Exactly, man. A little adversity never hurt anybody, you know. <laughs> you got a thi letter, right? Your letter jacket with thi. Yeah, yeah, that's what you need. A little. Star I earned my letter. I earned my letter with these videos. No, one hundred percent, man. You, you, you've been on your. It's you know, like your Jordan flu game over the past couple of weeks, trying to, there trying you to knock you out. <laughs> Eat that, you, that Utah Jazz, right? Yeah, exactly, man. We'll, Eat we'll, we'll that hang, Utah Jazz. Need to hang that picture up. You need to hand, 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 hand it. Follow through. Exactly, exactly. Good stuff, AJ. Way to power through it, man. Like I said, you sound a little bit better, but uh, glad you're yeah. feeling better as well, too. So. Slow process, man. I can imagine. I can imagine. But that's going to do it for this episode of our UNC Basketball ISO Series, focusing on Dawson Garcia in this one. Like I've continued to say and will continue to say, if you haven't seen the other videos we've done, basketball and football included, which we've done a ton throughout the offseason, click on our channel below. You'll find a playlist on the front. Click on it and you can watch all of them back to back if you want. But you can find all of them on that 
playlist. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. You guys know what to do. Like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because we do upload a lot, and we will continue to upload a lot. And so you know every time that we do upload, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks, guys. Thanks.